Welcome back friends. Today we are going to look about the atomic number, nuclide notation, mass spectrometer, its principle of working, its uses, and all the way on the calculations involved in the mass spectrometer. All of these questions they are asked directly in the exams and you can get 10 or 20 marks in the national exam. But only knowing these stuff. I'm very sorry because I will not be able to demonstrate them on a board because of the time which I have. But a few days later, I will upload an independent video explaining all of these expressions, all of these calculations on the board. Now, atomic number is the number of proton in the nucleus of an atom. Why? Atomic mass is the total number of protons and the neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Nuclide notation of an atom. Atom of different elements can be represented by symbol that indicate their respective atomic mass and atomic number. For example, if we write X, then we have A on the top left corner and Z on the top on the bottom left corner. X is an element, A is atomic mass and Z is the atomic number. Now, this style of lighting, which you are writing X, then A and Z, is what we call the nuclide notation. If you call your form to chemist, you can remember that. Now, spectroscopy, spectroscopy is the technique used to determine, used for determination of relative atomic masses. The instrument which is used is called mass spectrometer. Now, mass spectrometer is an instrument that converts molecules into ions and then separates the ions into their mass to charge ratio. Remember this definition. Separate or convert molecules into ions. Molecules into ions. Molecules, they don't have charges. Ions they always have charges. So after molecules, they have been ionized and they become charged, they are called ions. Now ions, they can be affected, they are movement by magnetic or electric field. Now the ions which have been converted from molecules, they are just passed through magnetic field. And the extent of deflection of the ions depends on their mass to charge ratio. Not only on their mass or not only on their charge, depending on their mass to charge ratio. Very important thing to remember when you are explaining about mass spectrometer. Now, function of mass spectrometer it is used in different functions, such as identification of atoms and isotopes, because here you can know different isotopes of an atom, identification of the compound, determination of relative atomic mass, and determination of relative molecular masses. Now, the mass spectrometer has the following major parts. The first part is called ionization chamber. As we have defined, mass spectrometer is an instrument which converts molecules into ions. So molecules to become ions, they must be ionized. They must be given ions. So ionization chamber is the part in which sample under investigation vaporizes and converted into positive ions. So it is vaporized and converted into positive ions. Then we have deflection system. Deflection system is the part which have a magnet bar. Its function is to deflect or bend the direction of moving positive ions and separate them so that they fall on the detector at different points depending on their mass to charge ratio. So the major function of the deflection system is to deflect the ions according to their mass to charge ratio. Then you have ion detector at the end. It identifies the ions and the form mass spectrum from which the relative atomic mass is calculated. Mass spectrum is a graph, is, it is appearing like graph like as we shall see it later. So here is the diagram of mass spectrometer. Sometimes they can ask you to explain maybe its parts, 
But most likely and most preferred question by teachers is by that with the diagram explain the function of mass spectrum spectrometer. Now, how does it work? Here, there are simple, simple, simple explanations which you can claim them, and if you be able to claim them, they can help you in explaining this question and getting maybe five marks in your next exam. Now, a sample whose relative atomic mass is to be determined is vaporized in the vaporization chamber. So, first it is vaporized in the vaporization chamber and then introduced in the ionization chamber. So, it is ionized as the vapor. It is introduced in the ionization chamber as the vapor. In the ionization chamber, the gaseous molecule or atoms are bombarded with electrons from a heated filament or coil. If the gaseous atom, they are colliding with the electron from the heated filament, they become charged. So the electron knock one another, knock one or more electron out of the sample, the sample particles to make positive ions. So the electrons knock other electrons from the sample and then the sample become positive charged because of the removal of electron. The ions are selected by the anode to the region of the magnetic field. Because they are positive charged, they are associated by anode, they are associated by the negative pole to the region of magnetic field. There in the magnetic field is where they undergo deflection. Remember, the degree of deflection depends on the mass to charge ratio of the ions. The heavier the ions undergo slight deflection, while the light ions are deflected strong. So the ions fall on different points on the photographic plate or detector. The detector then forms a mass spectrum of different peaks or height. The height of a peak in the spectrum is proportional to the ions number or abundance. The mass of the ions is deduced from the position which the lines occupy on the photographic plate. The mass spectrum then used to determine the relative atomic mass of the sample. So here is an example of mass spectrum is how it is appears. So for example here we had we had for example here we had four isotopes. One of the isotope have the relative of billions of one point five and its mass is two hundred and four. Another sort of 206, 207, 208, and they are led by abundance, they are lighting. So, what is the isotopes which make up the lead element? This was the mass spectrometer of lead. What are the isotopes? Here you can see there are four isotopes lead 82, 204, 82, 206, 82, 208. And another here is 207. What determines the relative atomic mass? Now, our formula remains the same. We are just taking the abundance U times its atomic mass. Then you plus another abundance times atomic mass. Then you divide by the total percentage. So as you can see here, uh, total percentage these which you are given, if you add them, you get 100. So you are just calculating by the same formula from 2 and you will get that one. Here also there are different techniques of questioning which teachers they are using. They are using. Boron is known to have two isotopes whose masses are up, whose masses are 10, put that one, and 11, put that one. And they exist in a proportion of 20 and 8 calculate the large atomic mass that is easiest. A sample of nickel was analyzed in mass spectrometer. Three peaks were observed. Large voluminous atomic masses. That is also simple. Study the known given and answer the questions that follow. That is also simple. So for this video, let me end up here. And very sorry. I will produce the independent video explaining about
these calculations. I'm still mobilizing you to join my Telegram group. Notes are there for free. You can download them. These lectures, I'm teaching them according to lecture labeled, notes labeled in General Chemistry 6 in my Telegram group. So I'll put the link in the description below. Join my group. You will be interested to discuss different.